All right, YouTube, Major here with a Sony Vegas tutorial. And uh, I'm going to be showing you how to highlight or spotlight an object and kind of dim out the rest of the frame. Uh, you'll see this a lot in America's Funniest Home Videos or like uh, uh, World's Dumbest Criminals when the quality is pretty low, so they just highlight what they want you to focus on. Um, and the first thing you want to do once you have your source media cut out here is you just want to duplicate the track. And uh, so once you have that duplicated, you'll see I have two identical video tracks here. Second thing you want to do is go to your first track, your top layer, uh, open up your effects, and select Cookie Cutter. And add that, and you'll get this window here. Then what you want to do is scroll down a little bit till you find size. I like to put that at about uh, 0.06, and you'll see why in a second. So after you've done that, you want to just keep this open. Uh, try not to pop it into that little window there. And then you can scroll down and lower the opacity of your, uh, your second layer. And you'll see here that the first layer has the cookie cutter. So it, it cuts out, actually. You can see here the method is cut away all but selection. So it cuts away all but this circle. And uh, so otherwise, if I didn't have that background layer, all this would be black. But since I do, and I reduce the opacity, it's just really dim. Um, so now you have this circle. I l like that size circle. It's I find it appropriate. So uh, after this, you're going to want to advance the, the video to the first point where your object appears. So for me, this is a little ways in. Um, and what I'm going to be highlighting is, there we go, after the blur cuts out, is this Jeep here, uh, where my cursor is. So what you want to do is you got to take this little dot here and just move your cookie cutter circle over to your object and create a new keyframe by clicking this little thingy here. Uh, it's got the plus icon on it. And uh, so that'll create a keyframe uh, with that position uh, mapped to that keyframe. And then I find the easiest thing to do is if it's moving fast or unpredictably your object uh, you just want to go frame by frame and so I find the easiest way to do that is to not don't click on the timeline because that can move your current time indicator around click right here under where uh, under where it says cookie cutter and just use your arrow key to move it one forward and uh, mine restarted at the beginning of the timeline so uh, alright this after that motion blur cuts out um, so I'm gonna create a timeline there after uh, I first see my object um, the timeline I created earlier got put at the beginning or the keyframe got put at the beginning of the timeline alright so from there you're just gonna want to click this gray area underneath and arrow one key forward then go up here and click the dot and use the arrow keys to roughly center it on your object. And you want to just keep going through that. Uh, it's a tedious process if it's moving uh, kind of rapidly or in a you know non-linear motion. Uh, however, if it is moving rather uh, linearly, you can kind of go forward about 10 frames, uh, maybe even more, and then just... Uh, whoops, I didn't select the dot. And then once you're about 10 frames ahead, you can move the cookie cutter back onto that object. Um, so I'm going to fast forward th through this part. It's pretty self-explanatory. And uh, I'll see you after the cut. Okay, so uh, if you could pick up there through the fast forward, you can see here I uh, kind of took my time because it was moving in a straight line, but as it started swerving around, uh, I got down to, you know, three 
maybe even down to one frame at a time for these, all these keyframes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of uh, just slowly run through this timeline uh, so you can see how the, the spotlight is following that Jeep there. Um, so you can, you can see it's just roughly following the Jeep. Everything else is cut out. Uh, so you can see, you know, right there, it's smacking into a telephone pole into a person, um, and that's that's pretty much the extent of this effect. Now, uh, the clip does look pretty ugly transition-wise. Um, like you can see, all of a sudden, you know, through this blur transition, there's just a circle that pops up. So uh, to create a nice smooth transition, uh, what I like to do is go to the first point where you want this cookie cutter effect to appear, which for me would be right there split the track and then go to the last point where you want the cookie cutter to be um, which for me would probably be about there because you know it's pretty close uh, and split the track again uh, zoom in a little bit to your uh, tracks and you'll see on uh, the the video where you cut off where you don't want the cookie cutter to be you just go to the event effects and you can just uh, whoopsie daisy that's the second track um, sorry about that. You want to apply. You want to go to the first track when you're splitting a video. I didn't realize I was on the the first track. Um, so let's go back to the the first point where I want the cookie cutter to be. Uh, right there. Then go to your uh, video effects and just take the cookie cutter off of the footage that you don't want it to be on. It's as simple as that. And then to create a nice, you know, smooth transition instead of just this you know immediately it's there you just want to drag the ends of the middle uh, clip out about a quarter of a second um, so you should get like uh, about an 09 or a 10 uh, where you have the little time of the transition and you want to stretch the middle one out not the side ones in so uh, if we go through this from the very beginning, you'll see I have this blur transition from a previously rendered clip. And then uh, it starts fading in pretty nice and slow. And uh, then it follows the Jeep, spins through the clip, and then at the end of it, you'll see we fade out quite nicely. Uh, one more application of this, uh, this kind of highlight thing is say you're doing you know a tutorial that involves text um, you can use it to highlight a text box that coupled with the crop in can do a lot uh, let's drag some more footy in here or not not school too alright so uh, this is a, a little goofy because um, it's for some reason recorded strangely but you'll see I have this box here uh, with IP addresses in it and DNS gateways, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, so, first thing you probably want to crop it in a little bit to zoom in on your your text box. Uh, you want to lock the aspect ratio, or otherwise it's just going to look stupid. Um, so that looks about good. I'm going to drag it over to where the text box is, so you can see that on the preview right there. And now what you want to do is click mask and then uh, spin to the point where you want the mask to pop up which would be right here for me zoom in and then just mask the box out with the pen tool I'm just gonna do this real quick corner 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 and complete the mask um, I didn't do it this time but before you do that you should duplicate the track I goofed up so I'm gonna do that now and then go down to the bottom track and remove the mask on this one. So now you can see when I reduce the opacity of the second one. Whoops, go back here. Uh, I got sent to the front of the timeline. Okay, so you'll see uh, the text box is highlighted. And you can change how dim the background is by just messing with the opacity. Um, there's all sorts of other stuff you can do, but I found these the most practical. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the short to the tutorial. Uh, come back when I'm not messing up all my words. Thanks.